relationship between English courts and European courts. First, let's look at the Court of Justice of the European Union. Under the European Communities Act 1972, the UK became a member of the European Communities on 1st January 1973. The effect of Section 2, Subsection 1 of the 1972 Act is mandatory incorporation of EU law into English law. The UK is required to give effect to any laws passed by the EU. Since the accession of the UK, the Court of Justice of European Union has stood above the Supreme Court as the ultimate court in disputes concerning European law. In internal domestic cases, the Supreme Court remains the final appeal court in the UK. Before we dig deep into the relationship of the European Court with the English courts, let's look at what does this court actually do. The Court of Justice interprets EU law to make sure it is applied in the same way in all EU countries and settles legal disputes between national governments and EU institutions. It also in certain circumstances be used by individuals, companies or organizations to take action against an EU institution if they feel it has somehow infringed their right. The court gives ruling on cases brought before it. The most common types of case concerns interpreting the law or preliminary rulings. National courts of EU countries are required to ensure EU law is properly applied, but courts in different countries might interpret it differently. If a national court is in doubt about the interpretation or validity of an EU law, it can ask the court for clarification. The same mechanism can be used to determine whether a national law or practice is compatible with EU law. Other cases concerning enforcing the law and are called infringement proceedings. This type of case is taken against a national government for failing to comply with EU law. It can be started by the European Commission or another EU country. If the country is found to be at fault, it must put things right at once or risk a second case being brought which may result in a fine. Other cases are concerning annulling EU legal acts and ensuring that EU takes action where the Parliament, Council and Commission must make certain decisions under certain circumstances. If they don't, EU governments, other EU institutions or under certain conditions, individuals or companies can complain to the court. And finally, sanctioning EU institutions where any person or company who has had their interest harmed as a result of the action or inaction of the EU or its staff can take action against them through the court. The relationship between the European Court of Justice and the UK Supreme Court is very important. The European Court of Justice acts only as a Supreme Court for the interpretation of European Union law. Consequently, there is no right to appeal at any stage in UK court proceedings to the European Court of Justice. However, any court in the UK may refer a particular point of law relating to European Union law to the European Court of Justice for determination. However, once the European Court of Justice has given its interpretation, the case is referred back to the court that referred it. The decision to refer a question to the European Court of Justice can be made by the court of its own initiative or at the request of any one of the parties before it. Now let's look at the European Court of Human Rights and its relationship with the English courts. The European Court of Human Rights is an international or supranational court established by European Convention of Human Rights. The court is based in Strasbourg, France and should not be confused with the Court of Justice of the European Union in Luxembourg. The European Court of Human Rights hear cases alleging that there has been a breach of the European Convention on Human Rights. It hears applications alleging that a contracting state has breached one or more of the human rights provisions concerning civil and political rights set out in the Convention and its protocols. An application can be lodged by an individual, a group of individuals or one or more of other contracting states and besides judgments, the court can also issue advisory opinions. The Convention was adopted within the context of Council of Europe and all of its 47 member states are contracting parties to the Convention. Judges of the European Court of Human Rights are full-time elected for six years by the Council of Europe. Most of the contracting parties to the European Convention on Human Rights have incorporated the Convention into their own national legal system, either through constitutional provision, statute or judicial decision. The court operates a two-stage procedure beginning with preliminary scrutiny by a panel of three judges who decide if the case is admissible. If a case survives this process, it proceeds to a chamber of seven judges who will normally determine the case. 
In exceptional circumstances, a seven-judge chamber may refer a case to a grand chamber of 17 judges if the case raises a serious question affecting the interpretation of the convention. The European Court of Human Rights does not sit within the English court hierarchy, but since the UK has incorporated the European Convention on Human Rights into the domestic law through the Human Rights Act 1998, the decisions of the European Court of Human Rights are highly influential on English courts dealing with human rights issues and the UK Supreme Court generally follows the decision of the European Court of Human Rights. Therefore, the relationship between the European Court of Human Rights and the UK Supreme Court is very important. It will be discussed in detail in later lectures, but I will give you some background here. As you know, before the Human Rights Act was passed by Parliament in 1998, it was not possible for an individual in the UK to challenge a decision of a public authority on the grounds that it violated his or her rights under the European Convention on Human Rights in the UK courts. Individuals had to take their case directly to the European Court of Human Rights in Strasbourg. Once the Act came into force on 2nd October 2000, individuals could claim a remedy for breaches of their convention rights in the UK courts. An individual who thinks that his or her convention rights have not been respected by a decision of a UK court may still bring a claim before the European Court of Human Rights, but they must first try their appeal in the UK court. It is the duty of all such courts, including the UK Supreme Court, to interpret all existing legislation so that it is compatible with the European Convention on Human Rights, so far as it is possible to do so. If the court decides it is not possible to interpret legislation so that it is compatible with the Convention, it will issue a Declaration of Incompatibility. Although a declaration of incompatibility does not place any legal obligation on the government to amend or repeal legislation, it sends a clear message to the legislature that they should change the law to make it compatible with the human rights set out in the convention. In giving effect to rights contained in the European Convention of Human Rights, the court must take account of any decisions of European Court of Human Rights. In the case of R versus Special Adjudicator 2004, Lord Bingham stated that no national court should, without strong reason, dilute or weaken the effect of Strasbourg case law. Keep in mind that in some circumstances, the Supreme Court has effectively sent issues back to Strasbourg for reconsideration, such as in the case of R versus Horncastle. An in-depth discussion will be held in later lectures or you may watch the relevant public law lectures.